Hello everyone. Welcome to grade 8 English medium physical education class. This is unit 11. Let us safeguard reproductive health. So today, in this lesson, we are going to talk about a very important part of our body. The body has many functional systems and uh, some of them are the digestive system, respiratory system, reproductive system, nervous system, and etc. So today, we are focusing our attention on the reproductive system. All animals reproduce. And the human reproductive systems function to ensure the survival of the species. With our reproductive systems, we are ensuring that the survival of the humankind is there. So first of all, we are going to talk about the male reproductive system. The male reproductive system consists of two testes. The two testes lies in the scrotum. These help to produce sperms. And the prostate gland which produces secretions, ductus, deferens, seminal tube, and the penis. The male reproductive system is open to the exterior through the urinary tract. In a boy, the sperm production starts during adolescence. The sperm is the paternal cell which takes part in fertilization. So the main part of the male reproductive system is the production of sperm, which is done through these testicles, which are next. We are going to learn about the female reproductive system. The female reproductive organs are situated in the pelvis. Unlike the male reproductive system, it is not in the outer part of our body. So this consists of two ovaries. These are called ovaries. Two fallopian tubes on either side which open into the uterus. The uterus, which is a muscular organ, the uterine cervix and the vagina. So here, this is the cervix and this, is, this part is called the vagina. The important part of this lesson is to learn about the menstrual cycle. So after a girl attains menarche or attains age, the ovaries release ova. This process is known as ovulation. The ovum enters the fallopian tube. The ovum or as we call it the egg is the maternal cell which takes part in fertilization. Now, children, you have to remember the ovum is as important as the sperm of a male reproductive system. Right. Then, the ovulation is an automatic process. We cannot put a stop to it. If the ovum is fertilized, the uterine walls become thick enabling the fertilized ovum to implant in the uterine wall. So if the ovum is fertilized, if the egg is fertilized, the uterine walls become thick, making it possible for the fertilized ovum 
to implant in the uterine wall. Implant means here placing itself in the uterine wall. Okay. So if the ovum is not fertilized, the uterine lining or we also call it endometrium is shed. That means it goes away about 14 days after ovulation. The remnants, that means the remaining parts of the uterine lining and some blood is expelled through the vagina. In other words, this is also called the period. So this process is known as menstruation. And it lasts about two to six days depending on the person. For some girls, it is around two, three, four days. But for some girls, it goes on for about one week. For us to learn more about this menstrual cycle, I want you to watch this video. Before watching the video, let's talk about what a menage is. The term menage is used to describe the onset of menstruation in a female. So onset of menstruation in the sense this is about the first time. The first time a girl gets the period. So after attaining menage or after attending age, the ovaries start releasing an ovum or an egg every 28 days. Ovulation will occur alternatively from the left and right ovaries each month. This process of ovulation which occurs once in every 28 days is known as the menstrual cycle. So every month, a girl will get the menstruation. Sometimes this time period may vary from 25 days to 35 days. So once in every 28 days is the usual number of days but for some it can vary from 25 days to 35 days. Okay so in a female ovulation stops by the age of 45 to 55 years. So this ovulation is not forever. It stops by the age of 45. So not exactly 45. So within the age 45 to 55 in any of those ages, it may stop. And this stopping of the ovulation is called menopause. Right? Now let's go to the video which gives you more information about the menstrual cycle. Next, let's go to fertilization. Fertilization happens when a sperm from a male person meets an ovum from a female person. After fertilization, the ovum travels along the fallopian tube. The sperms which enters the vagina during sexual intercourse enter the uterus through the uterine cervix. Okay, so the sperms travel through and fertilizes the ovum in the fallopian tube. The fertilized ovum travels through the fallopian tube into the uterus back again. So while this is happening, Changes take place in the uterine wall. As you watched in the previous video, the uterine walls become thick. This is to facilitate the nutrition of the embryo. The embryo is implanted in the inner lining of the uterine wall. So here what implanted means is the embryo goes and stays in the uterine wall. Okay, 
So the embryo then gradually grows and develops into a fetus. A fetus means a tiny baby. The fetus receives nutrition and oxygen from the mother through the umbilical cord. You know what the umbilical cord is, right? And it excretes waste products into the mother's blood. So the fetus develops in the mother's uterus for approximately nine months. Now, I want to show you another video which will help you to understand fertilization more. Okay, so I hope you got a good idea about what is fertilization and the menstrual cycle and everything. So after learning this lesson, what we can think of is that our body is a miracle. Okay, so our body is one of the world wonders because it can do many things. Just imagine and think how many things are there that you can do, that we can do, that animals cannot do, right? So one of them is reproduction. One of the amazing things that our body can do is reproduction. So our bodies are created in a way that we can ensure the survival of the human species. So we must respect mankind, respect the miracle that God has given to us and respect all in spite of gender. Can a man produce a child alone? I don't think so. The same way a woman cannot produce a child alone. So a man and woman together only can produce a child. So let's respect all, whether it is a man or a woman. We don't have to think, okay, we don't have to respect women, we don't have to respect men. That is not there. All are equal. We cannot live without men and men cannot live without women. Okay. So I hope you got a good idea about the reproductive systems of our body. Now, I have a few review questions for you to do. Please read the questions and write them in your books and write the answers definitely. Hope to see you again with another lesson. Until then, Goodbye, children. Thank you.